Come what are we step. doing? Going to Bethnal Green. Why are we going to Bethnal Green? Because uh, I'm going to show you my old estate. And uh, uh, we're going to have a laugh, meet my mate Emmanuel. And uh, yeah, it might be a bit of pie mash. Well, let's get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hold up. <laughs> I've got to find the tea. <laughs> right, we've gone past Shoreditch. Yeah. Um, the gentrified area in Oxton. And this is Hackney Road. This is my old neighbourhood. Well, you're going to meet Emmanuel tonight. Emmanuel was four years older than me, St. Lucian guy. And they kind of taught me to dance, but we just, we never had any money. That's the other thing, we never had any money. So we never had, we never, we were never into drugs. We couldn't really buy a lot of alcohol. So we just used to dance. My life is a third of a third of the time in America, a third of the time on a film set, a third of the time at home. I, I, I pine for these guys, you know, I miss them. People don't understand what a crazy life it is. It's like, if I was a big, big film star, they do one or two films a year. I do literally about six films a year because I'm always the out of focus best friend. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the lead. So I've done like 120 films. When I look back now, um, in retrospect, I, I realise that there's certain films that affected me. When I was a kid, I used to sit on my dad's knee and watch movies, and he would always watch... His favourite actors were Robert Duvall and Gene Hackman. And I remember watching The Godfather, which is actually my favourite film. And I was always drawn to Robert Duvall because he was so silent and did so minimalist in what he did, but, but so expressed so much by doing so little. And my old man always, always used to say, he plays a good part, doesn't he? He plays a, he plays a good part. <laughs> Mm. And I always thought, what does that mean, he plays a good part? And I, so I began to realise, get an appreciation of acting even then, really. Raymond! Ray! Hello, mate! <laughs> Sorry, it's my mate Raymond. <laughs> Used to work for a, a BT. Got a lovely pension. Fucking, remember telling me. Got a diamond pension in. Got a diamond pension, broke now. <laughs> Our police is closed up. Oh, I should get a bagel. Pelucci. It was that, it was yeah. bagel. Yeah, that's what we should do. Get a salt beef bagel, yeah? Bagel. Yeah. The funny thing is, I reckon my kids will end up moving back here, but they probably won't be able to afford it. Yeah. Which this is one. the one? This one. Yeah. How are you going? Where are you in? You good? Yeah, I'll do it on the way out, yeah? I'm good, man, I'm clean. I've had something to eat, Ed. What do you want, you want a coffee? I've had something to eat, I've just had the money, Ed. You want a donut? I've had something to eat, honestly, Ed, yeah? I've had some money, Ed, how are you still acting? Yeah, you good? Still acting, still acting? Yeah, yeah. God bless you, Ed. All right, good luck. Two salmon cream cheese. Two salmon cream Yeah, sorry, darling. And can I get... Uh, can I get six donuts, please? What does he have out there, usually? Cup of tea. Yeah, give him a donut, yeah, or give him a muffin and a cup of tea. Thank you. Thank you. When I left in the late 90s, he was all right. And then I came back here to shoot a movie, and we were shooting on Brick Lane, and he was like that. And that was, that was nearly seven, eight years ago. And he, and he was like that then. And he's still, still alive, but he's like that. Is there a film that made you want to be an actor? Yeah. I think Bob Hoskins was a massive influence. To, to, to watch films like the Long Good Friday, and to hear someone like Bob Hoskins speak, and for that character to be the protagonist, for the story to be told through that character. I remember he swore on screen, and it was authentic, it sounded real. It didn't sound fake. Usually you'd hear someone swear and it never sounded right. And he swore, and I remember thinking, God, it sounds just like my dad. And that was a, that, that was, um, a big effect on me, mm. I think. This is where I was born, here. Okay. I was brought up here, not born here. I'm the age of four, and I left when I was about 28.
right side round. <laughs> so that used to be old, the old people's landing. That used to be my house there. Up here? Yeah, up there. Yeah. You got your slippers on? No, no, no. You got some shoes. <laughs> And did he always live here? No, he, li he lives up there with his mum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Hey, man, great. Great. Oh, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. How you doing, man? Yeah, good. How are you? <laughs> you ready to dance already? No, no, it's not happening, man. Oh, it is. Good, sir. Eddie, get him dancing. Come on. Get him dancing. No, he's, he's good. He, he taught me to dance. Come Eddie, yeah, dance. Come on. Dance. No, he's my, he's my big brother. He, my mum used to say to him, I'd get, get him home by 10 o'clock and he'd get me home by 10 o'clock. Even if he was pulling a bird, he'd have to get me home by 10 o'clock. <laughs> we never had any money. Is this still, stills, are they? Yeah, they're still on video. Film. I'm videoing. This is video. <laughs> I'm not on here. No, no, you are. No, 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 no. This is going to go worldwide, mate. Really? <laughs> No. <laughs> Emmanuel had three brothers, two brothers. There were three boys and two sisters. When I spent as much time in their house, probably more time in their house than your own, than my own. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So everybody used to come, um, all nationalities really. Um, everyone was welcome. Yeah, yeah. Have the rice and peas and chicken. Oh no! Mm -hmm. If you walked in the kitchen, you'd have to fill up, put the, water the, on the rice to make sure it didn't burn. The she, pot, the pot was really yeah. Cold. The food and was she always feed us all. Yeah, yeah. And she was just, she was just a cleaner, single mother, bringing up five kids on her own and feed everybody else as well. The whole neighbourhood. Yeah. Amazing. No, everybody was welcome. Amazing. Good. Amazing. Good times. He is a fantastic dancer. Come on. And he's an artist. Come and on, let's dance. We gotta dance. You gotta dance. Come on. You gotta dance. Yes, man. Yes. Go on, Patrice Russian. Patrice Russian. <laughs> Forget me not. <laughs> you fucking could have done better than fucking Patrice Russian. I mean, I like to put a bit of a fucking James Brown on. <laughs> so when I get back to um, LA, I get off the plane and every sign I start reading spontaneously, and even my thoughts start in a Boston accent. Really? Even, yeah. Do it and, now. Are you sure? There's a trans out. You gotta, because if I read, if I read the signs, and the signs will kind of tell me what I gotta do, you know. And uh, gotta look at the car, and uh, the kids in the car. Uh, so keep your accent going. I want to ask you a film question. <laughs> As Terry. Um, yeah, Terry. All right. What's your favorite film, Terry? As Terry. Um, I think probably uh, Turner and Hooch. I'm not doing any drops. I'm not dropping now. <laughs> Come on, a little move, little move. Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well, little song, little song. I was gonna do a drop then. This is brilliant. Oh! Yes! See, up that up north, they call that a wig and roll. And this, he taught me this as well. You shake your legs. Oh, good. Love it. Absolutely love it. Right. You're my big brother. Oh. <laughs> when I was about eight, 17, 18, Left yeah, here? Left here and then a right on uh, Old Street. There was The Face magazine. Remember The Face? Yeah, they used to, yeah, I used to work for them. The Face did a cover of all the young British actors. Yeah. And there was Gary Oldman, Tim Roth, and I was mesmerised by this photograph right here yeah. of all these, of these famous young actors. And Gary was the one who stood out mm. above them all, you know. Gary's just... Um, Phenomenal as an actor and a director as well, really. There's a photographer, oh, I know who he knows, called Jack English. Yeah, yeah, it's his photographer. Yeah, and Jack, I was doing a film and Jack was... Jack was a unit photographer. Unit photographer. And he said to me, um, and I was talking about Gary, and I said, I'm, you know, so what a big fan of him I am. And Jack said, I've got, an, I've got a message from you from, from Gary, and it was an email. And, he, and all it said was, Eddie be an international actor. And it was a wonderful, what he was saying was, 
don't be a London actor. Yeah. You know, try and be, try and work with people from different countries, different cultures, different backgrounds. You know, and it was a one. It was really lovely. It was really, really short. Um, I've never spoken to him since. I've never. I don't. I don't know him personally. You know. But it, it was. It was quite a profound thing to say, really. Mm. There's once a great argument between Mrs. Camp and her son, and he was called saying to her that Mike, he said, you, you, my, my father, you destroyed my father. My father was a good man before you divorced him. I mean, he was a, the, the old man was a, was a right tr trouble. My father was a good man before you, you destroyed him. I loved my father. And she turned around and said, he's not your fucking father. He's your old home. Yeah, I know he lives here now. He's got the green door now. Yeah. I used to live here now, I used to live here. Oh, How long for? From 1972, when I was, no, yeah, 72, I was four. And then I left when I was 20, about 28, when I left. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Your dad so wasn't that, around, was it? No, no. So dad, he was like your... There wasn't many dads around. No, on, no. Not, not kind of every small. dad, every dad, there was a court order. If you saw someone's dad, you had to tell their mum and they'd block the They'd call the, the police. They'd call the police. <laughs> Dad's, 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 dad's meant phone the police. My mum got me a t-shirt once that said one race to human race. Mm. And I used to go and stand on the corner and if the, and because the NF used to walk past and we'd, we'd all um, swear at them when they walked past. They came, the, the, the National Front came, and Alan, Alan, my brother again, was into his comic books and into his, uh, it was Charles Atlas at the time, yeah. bodybuilding. Yeah. So he used to do a lot of the bodybuilding. And the, um, yeah, I remember he came out and he just flexed up into a big, big muscle bodybuild thing, a superhero character, just flexed up. And they all looked at him, and they all ran away. <laughs> and so we were, it was a victory for us. We yeah. Alan scared the whole of the National Front. I was talking to someone the other day about all this stuff now with this populism and racism and Trump now. That's where it's coming from. This is where, but we, we were dealing with that then. Mm. You know what I mean? Ago. Whenever you, we were dealing with those issues now. So when you, when you hear politicians trying to talk their language or trying to bend to them or yield to them, you can't yield to them. Mm. You can't bend to them. you just got to call them out. Mm. We've been calling them out all our lives. Yeah. What do you think have been the strongest female roles? Um, not sure. I think, I mean, I do, I, th I think Imelda in Vera Drake was amazing. Mm. The wonderful thing about Vera Drake is she's, she's a great mother, but an abortionist. Yeah. You know. I love I love um, paradox in characters. I love characters that have like that, like Vera. Vera is a great mother and an abortionist. I love that. We laugh so much on Vera Drake with Imelda, and um, there was a scene where they did this big rehearsal, and it it took. I think everyone was doing it. It was in character for like fifteen hours, and it was going to be when the police come and arrest Vera. Now, Melda and me have got a similar sense of humour, so just before the police knock on the door, we're having this party to celebrate Reg marrying Melda's yeah. daughter. Now, there's, there is a table where you pull up one side and you pull up the other side, and you lay it out. Now, Melda said to me, <laughs> she said to me, um, got all this food out, and I said, this is a lo lovely spread, Vera. And she said to me, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's been ages since we've had both flaps out. <laughs> so, I, so I had to put my head in, in salad because Mike doesn't want you to laugh, doesn't want to come out of character. If you watch the film, Reg goes really quiet. And the reason I was really quiet was I was trying to stop myself. <laughs> because she had just said before that night, it's been ages since you had both flaps out. <laughs> and whenever I see Imelda, she always goes to me, should we get both flaps out? <laughs> <laughs> See you later. See you later. Yeah, Thank you, mate. Oh, that's lovely, wasn't it? Brilliant. Oh, that's lovely. That's nice so for much. you as well. Oh. This is going to be lovely. I owe him so much when I was a kid. Because I was, in many ways, I mean, what he was saying about um, the breakdowns of families and stuff. If it wasn't for him and his family and his mum, I would have been a bit all over the place, you know what I mean? <laughs> I feel really honoured that you brought no, me No, no, it was lovely for you to, to, to agree to it. I love dancing with him. <laughs> when my wife, when I, I'm organising my 50th, and my wife went, listen, it's not just, I'm not going to, you've got to talk to me, you just, you can't just dance with Emmanuel all night long. <laughs>
I was, uh, yeah, I was in a club in Hackney. And someone said, will you guys come and be extras in a movie? And I said, I oh, did this movie. And I saw Jamie Foreman do a scene. And I was a printer then. And I saw him do it and I thought, God, that's great. he did it great. And I thought, I'd love to do that. So I just did, okay, so I said, that's what I want to do. And that was it. That's how you became an actor? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, mate.